Hello again, visual arts. It's dark o'clock in the morning and it hurts to be alive, but there's fish to be caught. So let's get into it and I'll show you some tips and tricks on how to catch yourself some beautiful fluke or flounder wherever you live in the country. And let's get into it. There we go. And all right, look at that beautiful sunset coming up. What a wonderful day. You'll notice a familiar face here. I'm fishing with Captain Tom Daffin, a good friend of mine. I'm fishing fever out of Cape May, New Jersey. And let's get straight into the tips. The first tip is it's really nice to get everything prepared the day before or the night before. You know, we're all busy with school and kids and work and school kids and work all at the same time. The sun's coming up. I would just love to sit down at this point and have a cup of coffee, but that just wasn't in the cards for me this day. I ran to the boat straight from work. And when I said it hurts to be alive, I really meant it. And here's why. I got this little cutie, just had a baby. I just moved. I just started a new job. Um, you know, the air conditioner broke. You name it, it's happening. And that's life. So if you have the time, just tie everything the night before. Don't be rigging up everything on your way out. And I worked on fishing boats for eight years professionally, where I fished every single day in order to make money. So it's not too big of a deal for me, but still, it would be nice to sit down, have a cup of coffee, and enjoy this beautiful sunset. Nevertheless, I'm going to rig everything up. We're going to head out. What I love to do is start off with some bucktails and gulps. That's a three ounce fixed hook bucktail on a surgeon's loop knot and a six and a half inch gulp nemesis. 12 inches above that, I got a dropper loop knot and a 3 0 Gamagatsu bait hook on a gulp swimming mullet. I also like to use gulp grubs on top, depending on the preferences and the days. And if you would like to know how to tie these knots and make these rigs, go ahead and check out in the description below where I'll leave a free, that's right, a free masterclass on rig and knot tying situations where I show you not only how to tie the knots in the rigs, but also the absolute best fishing conditions to use each knot and rig. And now if I could catch fish all day, every day on just artificial lures, bucktails and gulps, I would. It's just so much easier. You don't have to worry about bait. You don't have to worry about cutting bait. And best of all, you don't have to actually use the flounder or fluke you catch to make the ribbons. So I get to keep them. Now this fish here that you're going to see, this is the first fish. He's going to be 17 inches. We're going to throw him in the box. But as the day goes on, the bite dies out and we're going to have to cut them up and we're going to use some ribbons here. So I really like to use the gulp to get a couple of those fish in the boat. Check your state's laws and regulations. You don't want to catch fish and use ribbons that you're not allowed to use. In the state of New Jersey, you're allowed two fish 17 to 18 inches and one fish over 18 inches. So you could take a legal sized fish and use it for ribbons for bait. The problem is that that fish, you have to keep the rack and that fish comes out of your bag limit. So now we kept that one fish. Now we're one fish down in the boat. So we'll keep two or three different fish for ribbons for the whole crew. And we'll amass a pretty good catch here today with some big fish. And another mistake that I notice is when people rig up their bucktails, when they rig up their soft plastics, they don't take the time to ensure that the teaser or the soft plastic is on straight. If that lure is not hooked on that bucktail straight, what you're going to have is a helicopter effect where the lure is just going to spin around in circles. It's not natural looking. It won't catch any fish. So just make sure you take your time and everything you put on those hooks is straight. So it gives it the most natural presentation possible and it triggers the most bites as possible. And all right, it's rapid fire value time here on Fishing with Johnny Fish a Lot. So, another tip is make sure to pay attention to the fish a lots around you. How fast they're jigging? Are they right on bottom? Are the fish hitting off of bottom? What kind of structure are we fishing? You name it. The fish change their preferences trip after trip and day after day. What was working a week ago, what was working yesterday, may not be the ticket today. So you see Tom here, he bags himself a keeper. That's a nice fish. That's going to go right into the bucket. And then what you'll see is Tom's going to bag yet another fish back to back. And you'll hear him pull this fish in right here. And you'll hear him say, real aggressive jigging. I was really beating on it. And you'll hear him say it right here. Aggressive jigging. As soon as I start really beating on it, it's too late. And so Tom's going to bag himself even a third fish, and we're all going to start making adjustments. So sometimes you're the hero, and you're the one telling the crew what's going on, and other times you're making your own adjustments trying to sort it out. So Jan here is making his adjustments. He catches this fish. 
Jan's going to catch another fish right here next to me. And then Johnny Fishlatch going to start making adjustments. And here's a fish. And I'm going to catch a couple of fish back to back right here as well. And we're going to start to amount a pretty good catch during the day. But it's only because we're working together. It's one boat, one crew. We're all splitting the fish. And we're really sorting them out. And we end up having a really fun day, which would have otherwise been a really difficult bite. So always pay attention to that if you're on a party boat, if you're anywhere fishing, just pay attention to what others are doing around you so that you could hone in on those fish's preferences. Now, before we get too far into this, let me introduce you to the fish a lot crew on this day. See Captain Tom Daffin there, he's handling the fish. There's Mike closest to me, Frank's getting rigged up, and Lee, of course, is on the far right of the boat. And then our entertainment for the day, of course, is gonna be Steve. And this is Steve, folks. You wanna say hi to YouTube, Steve? Hi, YouTube. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Jan, you met earlier. He's fishing next to me, catching fish. And this next tip goes hand in hand with knowing what your fish lots are doing around you. And that is also knowing your gear. So Tom next to me is fishing with the Jigging World Nexus rod. Yes, it's a heavy power rod and I'm fishing with a John Skinner heavy power rod. But as I've stated in previous videos explaining fishing rods, which you could find in the description below, there is no industry standard for any of the categories of rods. So that rod, even though it's rated heavy power, is much lighter than the John Skinner rod. Meaning, if he's jigging really hard with that rod, that just means that he has to put a lot more torque in it to get that jig to do what he wants to trigger bites. I'm gonna have to put much less pressure on my rod because it's stiffer to get that same action out of the jig. So if I were to mimic Tom exactly, I would almost fish too fast and maybe deter these fish from hitting the lure. The same thing happens with reels. It happens all the time. Fish a lots will say, hey, what was your cadence and how you reeled in your lure? And it's so tough to tell because I might be using a six to one reel ratio and you might be using a four to one reel ratio. So just knowing your gear will help you. Okay, I need to reel it in so fast. I need to jig it so fast. You just have to understand the gear you're working with. What I'm doing here is I'm using an Accurist. This is such a perfect rod for this type of fishing, pretty much because you have the automatic thumb bar right there. When you release the thumb bar, the reel engages by itself. It makes it super easy and super convenient to fish, especially drift fishing, where you're going over different contours, you're going down slopes, you're coming up rocks, you know, so every once in a while you have to reel in, you'll have to drop back, and it just makes it so easy. The easier it is to operate your reel, the more time you save and the more time you could spend catching fish. Now, the other thing I really like about the Jigging World rods, about the John Skinner rod, any rod that you use for this type of jigging application where you're jigging with heavy lures, you're jigging with heavy lead, you could use a popcorn rig, chicken rig, this bucktail rig, is you really need a long butt on the end of that rod so that you can get it up underneath your armpit and you could jig all day, every day, and not get fatigued. If you use an equivalent like a slow rolling jigging rod, like we use, where the rod butt comes to about your forearm, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get really tired with this very aggressive jigging action, and the more fatigued you get, the more tired you get, the less likely you are to pay attention to those subtle flounder or fluke bites. So it's so important to understand your gear, all right, next up, you're going to see Tom hook this fish here with a stinger hook. Now, a stinger hook is an additional hook that you have at the end of your bucktail or your popcorn rig or chicken rig. Now, I don't like using stinger hooks. And the reason I don't like using it is because it's just extra lead and extra pointy stuff that you could stick in the rocks, in the wreck, whatever structure you're fishing. When we're fishing offshore for flounder, you know, there is just so much on the bottom to hang you up. And that stinger hook is just one extra thing that can make you lose your entire rig. It's important to realize that you're going to lose rigs when you fish this style of fishing. You have to be in the wreck. You have to be in the rocks in order to draw those bites out from the flounder or the fluke. But you can limit the amount of gear that you lose. You can limit the amount of money that you lose into the ocean without the stinger rig. Now, a bonus tip here is if you do find yourself hung in the wreck, don't use your hand ever to grab braid. That braid will cut your hand up so fierce 
you wouldn't believe it. You might as well just take a night and just start sawing up your hand. You know what I mean? That braid will really cut you and cut you bad. All right, talking about braid, braid is an absolute must for this type of fishing application. What you're doing here is you're dropping your lures down to the bottom of the earth and you're dealing with a lot of current. Now, we're using 30-pound braid here connected to 30 or 40-pound fluorocarbon or monofilament leader and that braid that low diameter braid will allow your bucktail or your weight to go straight down and get down in a hurry and that's important when you're jigging for these flounder you don't want a lot of scope in your line and a lot of scope in your line means you don't want the line really far away from the boat because you're almost guaranteeing yourself you're going to get hung up in the wreck you want it as vertical as you can while maintaining contact with the bottom and braid is a perfect line to allow you to do that. Another tip here is use the least amount of weight possible, but still remaining in contact with the bottom and keeping your baits in that strike zone. Using the least amount of weight as possible, especially with a bucktail, will allow you two advantages. It'll allow that bucktail to be as natural as possible to the fish because it's lighter and it'll move a lot easier. And it'll also allow you to feel the bucktail a lot more. The higher you go up in weight, the less feel you will typically have with the bottom and contact with your lures. And of course, more feel is better because you can feel those subtle bites and you can catch more fish. All right, now getting back to fluorocarbon versus monofilament for your leaders. I prefer fluorocarbon in this fishing situation because it's lower diameter line and it sinks. So it's going to allow my bait, my light bucktail, to get down to the bottom much easier and allow me to maintain contact with the bottom much easier. Now, the disadvantage is, like I said, you're going to get caught in the wreck all the time, right? So you're going to be in the wreck. You're going to lose your rigs. You're going to lose your line. And fluorocarbon is just way more expensive than monofilament. So the advantage of monofilament is it may float and you may have to use a little bit more weight to get a longer leader down into that strike zone but when you do lose your lures when you do lose your line it's not going to cost you nearly as much money and all this stuff adds up you know bucktails are expensive these teasers are expensive and line is expensive fish a lot fishing is expensive so if you can limit the amount you're losing here it's better for you so mono or floral i've used both i've caught fish off of both again it just comes down to your personal preference now, lastly, what we have to cover, of course, is spots. I say in almost every video, you have to find the fish first before you can catch the fish. So the structure is just so important to finding these fish and finding feeding fish. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check out my last video where I spoke about the 90-10 rule, where 90% of the feeding fish you could find in 10% of the water. Now, Going back to your leader lengths, this is where fluorocarbon, monofilament, and the length of your leader really comes into play. Take a look at that structure right there on that, on that depth finder. Those are 20 foot high rocks off the bottom. That's right, 20 feet of rocks from the bottom of the earth. So what that means is if you're going to use a much longer leader, right, because you don't want your braid coming into contact with anything. Braid is not abrasion resistance whatsoever. Fluorocarbon and monofilament have a lot of abrasion resistance, and so you could drag up against those rocks and not break off. Braid, as soon as braid touches those rocks, you're just about done. So if you're going to make a longer leader, you have ripping current, you have a lot of depth, that's where fluorocarbon can really be an advantage because it sinks and you're going to use a really long leader to prevent your braid from coming into contact with those rocks. If you want more tips on how to catch flounder, go ahead and click on this end card right here, where it'll take you another video where I share even more tips to help you catch more fish. Thanks for listening, fish lots. I'll see you out there on the water.